that's a good way to die. You know, if it's let's let's forget about this dying stuff on solo. Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. Well, anyway, I've been um, I've been for about forty some odd years, and uh, uh, how I got started was through a friend of mine. She was a Knowles instructor, and at the time, I was I was running troubled youth programs, and, and I. was brought in by Kay Harris and now we have food for ten and a half more days and we're at found Mesa is right there behind me and then we're gonna walk back up to our campsite that's about a mile and a half away I think I was in pain. <laughs> Get up! <laughs> well, this is day seven of the canyon section of a Knoll semester. We got a re ration yesterday, and today all of the students are out on their solo adventures. I just dropped off the last student and we won't see the students for two days, which you might think then instructors are super happy and now we're away from the students. And that is not the feeling at all. The feeling is more concern, a little bit of worry that the students, we want them to have a good solo experience and gain a deeper appreciation for wilderness spaces. And I don't think it's too optimistic on my part to say, I think the students will all achieve that. We have 10 students that just seem phenomenal. They're doing quite well. Three of them have already applied for a Knowles instructor course. They want to be instructors. It doesn't mean that they will become instructors, but just that desire to teach and share the wilderness with others is pretty profound. You notice I'm watching my step. I'm stepping to rocks and clumps of vegetation, trying to avoid stepping on any what we have already talked about, uh, the cryptobiotic soil. And I guess it's not called cryptobiotic soil anymore, but it's everywhere. It's a living organism. And if you step on it, it takes considerable time for it to come back. The front's coming through today. So, the weather has cooled off quite a bit. It's windy. And my hope is the mountains of Colorado are getting a lot of snow for ski season, for winter expeditions. 
and for our water table we can use all of the moisture we can get because in reality this is a pretty arid climate that we're in. Anyway, that's what's going on today in southeast Utah and in the canyons, the smaller canyons that go in to the larger canyon known as Cheese Box. Maybe it was a jackalope. How big are they? Jackalope is a, a, a cross between a rabbit and a pronghorn antelope. And they have antlers and they look like a rabbit. But they're, they're not real. They're a myth. And people out west tell Easterners that there's jackalopes out here to make them look foolish. Okay. It's like snipe hunting. This is our camp for the next two nights, for sure, maybe three nights. And this is day six or seven. I always get confused once I'm out here for a while. And we have this beautiful overhang protecting us. And that is Founders Mesa up there. And we're at one of the arms of Cheesebox Canyon. And I have to admit, as I do often, we have an incredibly beautiful spot. We're also well protected because this front's going through that I talked about earlier that I hope Colorado's getting a lot of snow. We're not getting moisture yet, but it could happen. And yeah, this is a great spot to be in, especially before a long Colorado winter in Aspen. And that is my companion that's doing everything out here. It's just amazing working with someone that knows what to do. Sanjana, thank you so much for being you. Well, this is our water supply for our camp. There's potholes all around. And most of them are filled, which is good. And it's just, it's a beautiful evening. The clouds are looking a little ominous but we have a good shelter and a good overhang so we don't have to worry too much about the weather. And I keep hoping that this weather is a sign that Colorado is getting lots of snow. <music> This is day 10, 
in the canyons and we had a front weather system go through yesterday with wind and cooler temperatures and today it is sunny and I won't say warm it's sunny and cool and I'm making my way up to a saddle just doing a day hike from camp and I really like this area this mesa there to my left is called Founders Mesa and I'm going up to a small saddle between Founders Mesa and this mesa right there. Well, I'm trying to walk and film at the same time. I think it's been good for me to be in the desert working a nose course during the time that the United States election was going on. And I feel a little bit isolated from those world events. But I think maybe in a good way. I'm guessing, and rightly so, there's a tremendous amount of sadness and angst in the world now. And when I say that, I realize that would have probably apply no matter which way the election went. My channel is not about political social activism but I voice those sentiments just in a reality of the situation that's a pretty cool tree I'm going to have to put the camera away for this last little bit. It doesn't look steep, but it's steep enough that I could get hurt if I don't watch my footing. Back there, the white rock, that's going into Cheesebox Canyon, and that's where the camp is that I will be returning to after this short visit to the top. Well, I made it to the top and now in this valley below or mesa, you can see the white rock and that is a canyon that turns into a slot canyon called Gravel Canyon which I've been in, I'm not sure, I think five times, four or five. In the distance, there's a cool looking butte 
right in the middle. And that is called Jacob's chair. And then I think the peaks way in the distance are the Henry's. Uh, it's one of the last mountain ranges in the continental United States that was explored. And so this is an isolated area. And not only because of the isolation, but for other reasons too, it is so beautiful. It's just fantastic panning background. to the other side where I came up. A little bit of a breeze, but generally the wind blows pretty hard out here a lot of the time. Hey Ron, what are you making today? Uh, pizza. Could you tell us what's going inside the pizza? Yeah, onions, garlic. It's a thin crust pizza, a little bit of cheese, maybe a lot of cheese. Let's see. Tomato. It's going to actually be very good. Nice. I don't like the kitchen setup right now because I'm squeezed in. And if an emergency happens, I'm screwed. We'll see how this turns out. What would the risk management director say? This is bad. You never want to, well, it's not too bad. I don't want to burn my foot or anything. But I don't think they would say much unless I post this, which I probably will.